hello everyone welcome back to another video and please subscribe to the channel if you're not already because i am hoping to reach 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year so as we begin what we're going to do in this video is we're going to be building out this cool looking blog page where we're going to have the first blog post to be this bigger image with the title here and the short description and the read more button and then below it we're going to display a grid of three items which are going to be articles on the blog post and then if we continue downwards because it's the home page then we're also going to have a newsletter form and then below this we're going to have a profile card so if you like doing those challenges from front and mentor which are like the profile card component we're going to be building something similar to this and then with a very simple footer on the bottom now the main part of this video is going to be the blog posts where we're going to be using sanity to make entries into our blog page and then display them on the screen and so this image here is dynamic meaning it is going to be dependent on the blog post that is currently the first one and we're going to be arranging them in descending order which means the latest article is going to be the first one and the first one here is the one that is also going to have the main image on the top so if i were to change this one to be the first image then the this image is the one that is going to appear on the top and we're going to be doing this dynamically and if you saw the video where we built a blog page using sanity and react.js we're going to be adding a bit more onto this application because in that video we only had the title here and then we had a read more button but now what we're going to do is we're also going to add the author here so if you have multiple authors their names are going to appear and then we're also going to add the date when the blog post was written and then the title and then and then a short description which is just going to be the first paragraph of your blog post and then when you click on this card here or on the bigger image really then it's going to take you into the page for the blog post which is going to have its thumbnail image on top the title then the name of the person who wrote it when it was written and then the rest of the blog post is going to follow all the way to the bottom and then once again we're going to display the component here of the author and then we can now go back and we can click on another blog post and it's going to fetch the data for that particular blog post and then display it on the screen and then the final page that we're going to have is the all blog posts because if you have many blog posts you don't want to render all of them on the home page so i added in this extra page to list all the blog posts that you are going to have so i added multiple of them just for the showcase of this application and in case you're wondering whether you can use sanity to run your own blog then the answer is yes because let me go into my website to show you my blog here is actually run on sanity and i actually changed the ui because i built this out and then i i looked at it and it was a nice looking ui so i also changed the ui for my blog application inside here and you can see that the last time i wrote a blog post was on 20th of july and the first time that i wrote one was on 12th of august last year so about a year and it's still up and running Granted, I don't have many blog posts, but you can see that it is actually feasible that you can use Sanity to have your blog posts inside here. And then the final feature of this application is that it has the dark mode and the light mode, which is dependent on whether you're running the dark mode or the light mode in your system preferences. So if I were to switch this into light mode, then we would get the light mode of the application, as you can see right here. And if you switch back into dark mode, then you're going to get the dark mode of the application. Granted, I do like the dark mode version better than the light mode. But we're just going to build both of them in case you're wondering how you can do that. And we're going to be using Tailwind CSS because it's much, much easier. Please subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And ring the notification bell so that you're always going to be notified of when I upload a new video. So let's begin. And the first thing that I've done is I have a new React application running. And I've done that by running npx create react app and I've called my application sanity blog yt right here. So you can go ahead and run this command and then you can give your application whatever name that you want. I've decided to call mine sanity blog yt. And then I've opened up Visual Studio Code into this folder by just cding into that particular folder and then saying code dot. And you can see that that opens up this instance of Visual Studio Code. And now what I'm going to do is using Ctrl and J to toggle our terminal. I'm going to open up my terminal and then I'm going to install a few dependencies that we're going to need. And I'm going to say npm install React Router DOM. And then we're going to need date FNS. And we're going to need date FNS because this is what is going to help us to format the dates from Sanity. And then let me see what else do we need. 
we need tailwind css obviously so let this tool install first of all and then let's go into the tailwind css website so that we can install this tailwind css so get started and then let's go into the framework guides and then create your tab and then let's copy this command so copy and then let's wait for this to finish running so once that runs then we can just paste in this command to install tailwind css as a dev dependency and then we can go ahead and copy this second one and then once it runs once again just paste it in and it's going to generate our tailwind config and post css config files and they are right here as you can see and then let's just go ahead and copy this line so copy this and then we can paste it inside our tailwind config right inside here paste it inside here and save this and then let's go ahead and copy these three lines into our index.css and the index.css is inside the source folder so here just paste it on top of this and then let's see we can now run npm start to start our server but before we do that we're going to run a few more things so first of all what i want to do is i want to go and get two fonts from google fonts which we're going to be using as our headings and as our paragraphs and so let me just specify that for the headings so for the h1s the h2s h3s h4s h5s and h6 then we're going to be using a font family called oswald oswald with a fallback of sans serif and then i don't know what font family we're going to use for the body yet because the font family that I used here, the font family here is called Product Sans, and it's the previous font that Google used, but it is not available on the operating system. You have to download and install the fonts manually. And because that is not quite feasible for everyone, then what I want to do is I just want to select a new font from fonts.google.com. So fonts.google.com. And we're just going to select a font probably that looks almost like this, but let's just see. And you know what i'm going to use the roboto font so let me select the roboto font and this is only for the paragraphs so we only need the 400 font widths come on select this okay so we need the 400 font width for this okay remove this let's select the 400 here and then let's go back and let's also get the oswald font so oswald let's grab this one for our headings and then let's grab the for the headings right let's grab the 600 for the headings and then just using the import tab here let's just copy this and then let's just paste it let's paste it above this there we go so that now we are going to change this up and this is going to be using roboto with a fallback of sans serif there we go we can remove this margin and then now what i want to do is i want to specify that for all the urls to have a list style type of none so that we don't have bulleted lists and then I want to say that for all the images to have a max width of 100% so that they don't overflow outside of the container in which they are placed. And I think these styles are going to be fine for now. Oh, you know what? Let me do this. Because we're going to be using, the, we're going to be building the dark mode and the light mode. Let me use a tailwind directive called apply. So at apply. And I'm going to say that we're going to have a text slate of 900 for dark, for light mode screens. And then when you have dark mode enabled now this class is not going to work yet and i'm going to explain why it's not going to work but what we're saying here is basically when we have dark mode enabled then i want the text to be white in color and then let me just go ahead and specify for the paragraphs as well and i'm going to say that at apply oops at apply and i'm going to say we're going to have a text slate of 600 for light mode screens and then when dark mode is enabled then we're going to have a text slate of 400 and then let me see what else we need to do here let me just say let's say text small first of all with leading relaxed to increase the line height because of the small text relaxed or well, let me say loose loose is about line height of two hmm and then we're going to say that for large screens, then the text is going to go back to the base font, which is 16 pixels. And then for large screens, once again, then let's bring back the line height to relaxed. There we go. Okay. 
And like I said, this class is not yet going to work because in our Talent config, we haven't configured dark mode yet. But let's just save this because we're going to be building up the light mode first anyway. And then let's go ahead and now let's install Sanity, which is going to be our Sanity Studio. So I'm going to open up my terminal once again using Ctrl and J. So just toggle it like this. And then I'm going to say Sanity init. Oops, Sanity. Sanity init. So initialize Sanity. There we go. And then I have a number of projects here, but because of this tutorial, I'm just going to say create new project. So select it, select it using the arrow keys and just say create new project. And for the project name, I'm just going to call this, let me say, let me say Sanity Blog Update. Or let me say, just let me just say Sanity Blog YT. So that is going to be the project name. And then let's see what else. So the default data set is going to be the production. So I'm just going to say yes. And then let this run. And then once it finishes running, the output is going to be this one. It is correct. It's going to create a Sanity Blog YT folder inside here, which is what we want. So this is correct. So just say enter. And then we're going to be using the blog schema because we want to build a blog out of it. You can build an e-commerce or a movie project out of this as well. And I might do that in the future for uh, other projects. But for now, let's just use the blog schema here. So select this. And then now we can let this run. In my case, it's going to take quite a while, but for you, it might be a bit faster. So let me just skip to the end. So after about 20 minutes, this has finally finished running. And I've just remembered that I forgot to mention that Sanity, the command Sanity is not part of Windows and you actually have to install it first. So you can install it by saying npm install dash g meaning globally at Sanity forward slash CLI. So install the sanity cli using this command and then that's when you'll be able to run sanity in it and then you can use these other commands as well for now what i'm going to do is i'm going to split my terminal here so split my terminal like so and then in this first terminal which is the create react app i'm going to say npm run start and then in this second terminal i'm going to cd into my sanity studio which is the sanity blog here the folder that is created here so I'm going to say cd into sanity blog yt. And then inside this folder, I'm going to say sanity start. And then I'm going to start my sanity studio like so. And then you know what I've just remembered? I've just remembered that we have not installed a few dependencies here. So let me close the React server here. And then what we're going to install is, let me make this bigger. Oops. Let me make this bigger. We're going to install Two dependencies and i'm going to say npm install at sanity forward slash client which is going to install the sanity client and then we also want to install at portable text forward slash react now portable text if you watch the previous video we used what is called block context to react it has since been updated into portable text so we're going to be using portable text for our application so install these two dependencies and then as that runs, then this is also compiling here. And the Sanity server is going to start on localhost 3333. And the React server is going to start on localhost 3000. So as those two continue running, then I'm going to close this. And then what I want to do is I want to clean up this. So I'm going to delete this file. I'm going to delete the app CSS, the app test JS, the logo, report web vitals, and the setup tests. So delete them. And then once we delete them, then I'm going to go into my index.js and then I'm going to remove this part here because we've deleted this file and then remove this as well and then save it. And then inside my app.js, I'm going to remove this part on top and then I'm going to remove this part as well and then remove the header here. And then I'm going to say export default function. And then right away, what I want to do is I want to begin setting up React Router DOM. So I'm going to say import browser router. So import browser router. And then we also want to import routes and route from React router DOM. And then let me see, do we need to import something else? Probably not yet. And then now let's begin the initial setup for our application. And what we're going to do is this, oops. So we are going to be returning browser router. So browser router. What is happening? 
okay and then inside here we're going to return a routes component and then we're going to have the default route and the path for this because it's the the home page the landing page where it's going to go into the forward slash and then the element that we want to render inside here is called the home page So render out the home page so home page component which we we have not yet created so this is going to throw an error and then close this out of course and then copy this down oops what is happening uh okay something is wrong let me reset just a moment okay so we're back so the second path that we're going to be rendering here is the forward slash blog and the element that we're going to be rendering is called the blog and then just copy this down one more time and then this is going to be going into forward slash blog forward slash full colon slug which is going to be the unique title for each of the blog posts that we're going to have that is going to show in our address bar in the browser and then inside here the element we want to render is the blog post so we're going to go ahead and create these three elements and you know what let me add even a fourth one which is going to be our error component so anything that goes into a path that doesn't exist so we want to render a wildcard then we want the error page to show up meaning any page that doesn't match any of these then we want the error page to show up and then let's go ahead and save this but of course we're going to have an error and then let me just confirm that this has finished yes and our sanity studio has compiled into logos 3333 so if I copy this and go into localhost 3333 inside my browser here, then what you're going to see is what is happening. Okay, localhost 3333, localhost 3333 to open up our Sanity Studio. And then let's go back inside here and then let's say npm run start to start our dev server. So as that speeds up, then let's go ahead and import these components. So I'm going to say import home page from dot slash components dot slash home page. And this is probably better if it comes from pages. So let me rename this into pages. So pages. And then let's also copy this downwards. So copy one, two. And is it three actually? So that we can have the blog page as well. So log. And then this next one is going to say control D, it's going to say blog post. And then this final one is going to be our error page. And then let's go ahead and create this directory and then create this file. So inside our source folder, right click and say new folder. And this is going to be called pages. And then inside pages, we're going to have homepage, homepage.js. And then inside homepage.js, if you have an extension called ES7 React Redux snippets, then you can say RFC which is going to generate a React function component for you. And if you don't have that extension, then you can go into your extensions and it is called ES7 plus React Redux and React Native Snippets. So just look for this extension and you can install it. You don't have to have it, but like it just removes the redundancy out of having to type this out every single time that you create a new file. And then this is going to be the homepage for now. So just save it. And then let's also create our blog.js and then just say RFC, this is going to be our blog page, and then our blog post, so blog post.js. And blog post.js is going to say, oops, okay, so RFC, and then blog post, and then finally we're going to have our error page, so error, error.js, and just say RFC, and this is going to be our error page, and of course we're going to be customizing this, we're going to be starting it out to look just a bit better. And so now what I want to do is I just want to build up the UI first before we connect everything with Sanity. And remember, we started our dev server using npm run start. And if you did, then you should probably get these errors because we didn't have these files yet. But now I'm going to go back into app.js and save it. And we should see everything compiling and compiled successfully here. And on our right here is the Sanity Studio, which is running on localhost 3333. So if you open this up, I'm just going to go to this page so that I can show you how the Sanity bucket looks like. And then we should also be able to see our React application here that says home page. So in our Sanity, of course, it's going to ask you to log in. I'm just going to log in. And then once you log in, then this is the page that you're going to get. So we're going to have 
a very simple structure we have the post content here the author and the category so i'm not going to look into this right now because i just want to build up the ui but when we get into sanity that's when i'm going to come back to this so it can remain open it doesn't really matter all that much but back inside our react application let's just build up the ui and what i'm going to do is this i'm going to close this and then inside the home page we are going to have this and i'm just thinking that probably i'm going to extract some components into the components folder so that we don't have quite a big file on the home page and so you know what what i'm going to do actually is this i'm going to create a new folder called components and then inside components remember we have a call to action section so i'm going to call that section newsletter so newsletter.js and then remember we also have a profile card that we're supposed to create so let me call that component profile profile card .js, or let me just call it profile.js it's descriptive enough and then we're also going to have the footer so footer footer.js and then let me see what do we need now they're only going to be the blog posts on top okay so let's go ahead and create these sections so first of all for our newsletter we're just going to say rfc and then we're going to have this so let's go ahead and build up the ui we're going to have a section here and then inside this section we are going to have an article and then this article is going to have an h2 that says sign up to the newsletter and then below this we're just going to have a paragraph that says receive the latest updates and then we're just going to say no spam and unsubscribe and subscribe anytime simple as that and then below this article we're going to have another article which is going to be our form with no action but we're going to have an input with a type of email with a name of email with an id of email with some placeholder here that says example oops example at email oops at email.com and then we're going to set this to required so that you can submit the form without filling it in and then we're going to have a button with the type of submit and then this is just going to say subscribe this looks okay so what i'm going to do now is this and by the way if you want to actually have a newsletter form then you should probably check out button down they have a, a nice email service or i think convert kit as well uh, but i'm not i've not used convert kit all that much my newsletter currently runs on button down so this is the one that i'm most conversant with if you want to it's just as easy as like copying and pasting a few lines of code into into your your ui and and you just have a newsletter form so let's go ahead and do this let me save this and then inside my home page then i'm going to be rendering out the newsletter so i'm going to return a react fragment and on top of this i'm just going to render the newsletter and import it on top so for now the home page is going to be showing the newsletter nothing really much but we should see sign up to the newsletter here okay so this is looking okay and then now let's go ahead and just style this out so inside this section i'm going to give this a class name of let me say padding y of 20 padding on the y y axis of 20 and then let me give it a linear gradient so bg gradient to right so to the right we are starting from a color of indigo indigo dash 600 we are going to a color of let's say slate dash 800 let me see how this looks there we go that's looking okay it's probably not the same color that i used but it does the job well and then inside this h2 let me see let me see how this is so this change this text needs to change to white so i'm going to say this i'm going to be inside this h2 give this a class name of text white and then let's say text 3xl and margin bottom of 4 to push it away from the paragraph and then inside this paragraph i'm going to give this a class name of let's say margin bottom you know what? let me not add a margin bottom on the paragraph because i'm going to be displaying this section as a flex box and then i'm going to add a gap to it so that the articles are going to separate one from another so let me see let me change the text here to slate dash let me say 600 that should be visible enough here oops why doesn't oh wait a minute did i set a default color on the paragraphs here Where are the paragraphs text slate 600 oh it's already 600 so let me change this to 400 change this to 400 how light is that no too dark so 100 that should be fine and then now let's go inside this section 
and you know what i've just realized a problem because i want to limit this section on big screens right so you would think that if i add padding on the x axis here of five it pushes inwards but if i add a max width of about 7xl here then you see that the background color doesn't go all the way to the end so in order to fix that then i'm going to grab these two articles cut them out and then place them inside the div and then give this div a class of max with 7xl with an mx of auto so that it centers everything and then paste this in and then i'm going to remove this from here so i remove it and it should fix it so now the content is limited without affecting the background color okay that's looking nice nice let me see now we need to increase the size of this on big screens so let me just say here that for large screens then increase the text to 4xl and then let me go inside this div and then display this div as a grid with two grid with one grid column with a gap of eight because on small screens then it's going to be one on top of the other and then i'm going to say text dash center for small screens of course there we go and then i'm going to say that for let me say for medium screens then the text should go back to the left and then for medium screens then i want the grid columns to be two and then let me see for medium screens then increase the gap to 16. so one one on the left and then the other on the right and then what i want to do as well is for medium screens i'm going to say place items the center so that this moves downwards just a bit there we go and now it is centered properly and then now what i want to do is this i don't want this to go so much to the end i'm just realizing that the max width of 7xl is a bit large so let me reduce this to about 4xl let me see how it looks because i want them to be close to one another and then now we're going to style this out for small screens first so let me reduce this to about here and then let me see now i want so for small screens i want this input to have a full width as well as the button so we are going to do this i'm going to be inside the input give this a class name of width that's full and padding y of two and padding x of four with a very slight rounded border and with a very slight box shadow as well let me save this let's see how it looks this is how it looks okay and then i'm going to say this i'm going to have a margin on the bottom of four to push away from the button just a bit and then you know what uh, let me try something let me try to make this input transparent so let me say bg transparent and then let me, let me add a border so border and then add a border color so border slate of 200 let me see how it looks i think this looks does it does it really hmm let me say let me change the placeholder color as well so placeholder slate 100 and then let me also change the text color so text slate 100 as well so that when you type in it's actually visible and then let me add a tracking dash wide to increase the letter spacing here just a bit just a bit and then yeah let's have that i think that's okay you know what let me reduce the slate color here to 300 so that there is kind of like a bit of a hierarchy and you know what? even the placeholder color here 300 let me see yeah let's have it at that and then let's style out this button so this button we're going to give this a class name of let me say bg white and padding y of two padding x of eight with a rounded border with a very slight box shadow let's in change the text to slate oops text slate let's say about 800 let's say tracking dash wide and then let me see let's say that when we hover over this then reduce the opacity to about 75 then add a very slight transition so transition all with a duration of about 200 and then let me see we're going to have that okay that's looking okay and then now what i want to do is i'm going to give this a width of full on mobile screens here and then when we get to about md screens right around here then i want this to go back to a width of auto so that it comes back to this end so i'm going to say that for md screens then width should be going to be auto and we're going to have that would you look at that that's looking nice 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 and that is our newsletter section and then now let's build out our profile card next so close this and then inside the profile card we're going to say rfc once again and then inside here we're going to have the ui looking as follows we're going to have a div and then inside this div we're going to have an article this article is going to be an image and we're going to get the source for this image and then below this article we're going to have another article with an h3 that says my name it's going to say my name because i'm going to be the only author for this blog really and uh, and then below this we're going to have a paragraph so let me just say let me just say about lorem 
15. Not I can add a description about myself, right? So let me let me add a description. So let me say let me say is a front end web developer, sorry, web designer and a developer in Figma and React.js based in Nairobi, Kenya. And then below this, let's have a UL with two list items. And then this is just going to say Facebook. You can use icons here. And probably using icons is a bit better. And then this is going to say Twitter. And you know what? Let me use icons. You know what? Let me use icons. Let's install a package called React icons. So just add a terminal here. Then let's say npm install install react icons and then close this as it installs and then inside here we're going to render a component called, called gr facebook from react icons and then here we're going to say fa twitter from react icons as well and then let's import these two components so we're going to say import gr facebook from react icons what slash gr oh wait a minute does that even exist or am i imagining something Let's say import FA Twitter from React icons forward slash font also. And then this should run. Okay, as it continues to run, let's go ahead and get this image. So let's get our image, and our image is going to be coming from pexels.com. I'm just going to copy the image address. So let's go into pexels.com. And then inside pexels, let's search for profile. Let me, what did I search for? Is it profile or what? I search, okay, this one, this image, this is the one that I want to use. And then I'm just going to right click and say copy image address. And then back inside here, I'm going to paste it inside my source folder, inside my source attribute, sorry. And then the alt attribute in case the image fails to load, then I just want to render my name. And then let's see, let's see, has this finished? It has finished. So let's go ahead and save this. And then let's go inside our home page and then below our newsletter let's render our profile so profile and then let's see what we're going to have on the screen close this and then let's see once it reloads actually reload there we go so we have our profile card here and then we have our two icons right here and then let's begin to style this out so inside the profile we're going to go inside this div and give this div a class name of max with dash let's say 2xl to excel with an mx of auto let me see how that looks reduce it massively okay and then what we're going to do now is this we're going to display this as a grid with grid columns dash one with a gap of about eight so that is going to be stacked one on top of the other obviously right and then you know what let's also give this a bg of white what did i have as a background for the body by the way because the body needs to have a very slight background color so that we can actually see this card. So below this, I'm going to say add apply. And I'm going to say apply a BG of slate dash. Mm, slate 200. Let me see how it looks. Slate 200. Yeah, that's, that should be fine. Uh, you know what? Let me, let me try something. Let me try pink. Does pink exist? It does exist ah that's too much pink hundred hmm i mean technically we can work with this we can work with this so let's just have it as pink 100 and then let's go where is it where is it where is it inside our profile let's go here and let's say that for empty screens that the grid column should be two which means the image is going to be here and here is going to be the text and then let's go and give this a rounded of large with a shadow of XL. Let me see XL. How does that look? That's too much. So let's say shadow large. Okay, okay. And then let's say for empty screens, then place dash items dash center. Bring this downwards. There we go. And then let's go inside. Let me see. Let me see. We need this to be rounded. So let's say overflow dash hidden so this is rounded here there we go and then let me go ahead and increase the height of this image so give this image a class name and say that for md screens then i want the height to be about 64 how does that look 
that looks okay and then let's say for md screens then object cover as well so that it doesn't look stretched there we go that's much better and then let's go ahead and style this out to be bigger so for for the h3 here let's give this a class name of text to xl and margin bottom of four and then let me see this is okay as it is and then we just need to do for the ul so give this a class name and say flex and item center and justify start so that it doesn't go to the center and then let's give it a gap of about four and then for this icon let's increase the icon size so give this a class name of text about to excel and then let's just copy this and paste it here that should do it okay and then let's give this a margin top of about eight to push out from the paragraph and then let's change this to text slate dash 600 copy this and paste it here as well so that this changes color fantastic and you know what you know what this shouldn't go all the way to the end so let me give this article a class name and say that for md screens then i want the padding on the right to be eight and i've chosen eight here because we have a gap of eight here so just to keep it uniform you can see this is looking quite quite nice right and then we are going to deal with margins and then let me add a margin on top of this profile card so let me just say around here let me say margin on the y of 20 to push away from this one here and then from the footer as well and let's go ahead and create our footer next so we can close this and then inside our footer let's say rfc and then here we're going to have oops we're going to have a footer element footer and then let's go ahead and create a ul you know what let's have an h3 first of all that says share on social media and then below this h3 we're going to have a ul with about five list items so ul times five this first one is going to be say facebook and then instagram and then twitter and then pinterest and then finally tumblr and then we're going to save this and then let's go inside our home page and render our footer here so footer and then let's remember to import it as well and we should see our footer here okay and then now back inside the footer we're going to give this a class name of border on the top and then border slate 400 and then max width 7xl and mx of auto then this how it looks should be here there we go and then give it a padding on the y of 20 to increase this spacing just a bit oops that's too much let's say padding y of 10 that should be fine and then let's go ahead and do this let me say i want this text to always be on the center so let me go ahead and say give this a class of flex and item center and justify center and then text center as well we should bring it here there we go and then let me go ahead and say flex dash column and then inside this ul i'm going to give this a class name of text dash small and text slate dash 600 just to make it a bit smaller because i don't have this text to be so large and then let me give slay margin top of about four and then let's also change this into a flex box of flex and item center and justify center and then let's also say flex wrap so that it automatically goes into the next line if they reach the borders of the screen and then let's give it a gap of about to four to separate everything out and there we go looking quite quite nice you can change this into links if you want but i'm not going to do that so inside this h3 give this a class name of about text to xl to make it just a bit bigger that's looking okay you know let me say text xl or even text large you know that looks okay that looks okay fantastic so we have our footer here we have our profile card and then we have our newsletter so next let's begin to build out the ui for our blog and our blog for the home page is just going to live inside the home page so inside here let me go ahead and let me say this we're going to have a section and then inside this section we're going to have an article and then this article is going to be the first big image on top so let me go ahead and create let me say so let me go ahead and add an image here 
the source for this image i thought i still had it let me go ahead back into now let me just get another image so back inside pixels i've searched for city and i'm just going to grab this image so copy this image address and then just paste it inside here and then below this we're going to have let me say an h1 that says lorem you know what let me just say document title document title and then below this we're going to have a paragraph here that says about lorem 20 and then below this we're going to have a button that says read more and this is not actually going to be a button it's going to be a link because you want this to link to somewhere else and then let me see let's save this because i want to style this out i, I just want to build out the ui first as i said and then let's go inside this section and give this section a class name of max with dash 7 xl and mx auto let me see how it looks there we go give this image a class name of height dash 64 let's see reduce it massively and with dash full stretch it out and then object dash cover so that it doesn't look all stretched out and not height 64 is a bit small so let's say height dash 96 make it just a bit bigger and then instead here let's give this a rounded of let's say 2xl how how large is that that's looking okay and then let's go back inside this section and give it a margin on the y of 20 so that it pushes downwards and then push away, pushes away from this just a bit and then now what we need to do is we need this to come here so what we're going to do is the following actually we're going to grab this h1 the paragraph and the button cut it out place it inside the div and then give this div a class name of absolute absolute and then let's say bottom of eight and left of eight and then let me see it's going to like uh, do this but then now what we want to do is we want it to come relative to this image so we're going to go inside this article and give this article a class name of relative we should now bring it here there we go and then let's inside this h1 give this a class name of text 4xl for large screens text let's say 5xl and margin bottom of let's say 6 and then text white and then inside this paragraph give this a class name of text slate 200 margin bottom of 8 and then this button is going to be styled the same way as the button on as our submit button here so let me just go back and just copy the classes so inside the newsletter let's copy these class names here copy and then paste them inside here but then we're going to remove this width of full and not even this width of auto we're going to remove it is there anything else we need to remove i don't think so so let's save this and then let's see and we're going to have that and of course i don't i want to limit this because i don't want this text to go all the way to the end so let me go ahead and now let me change this to 100 as well and then let me say that for medium screens and the width of this is going to be a half so one over two which is going to limit it right there that's looking fantastic and you can see that this is going to be our document title and then below this section we're going to have another section which are going to be articles and these articles are going to be structured as follows we're going to have an image let me see oh i thought i still had the thing pasted in so let me just copy this image address paste it in and then below this image we're going to have an h2 that says document title document title and then below this h2 actually h2 below this we're going to have a short description so about lorem about 20 and you know what on top of this we're going to have a paragraph which is going to say by by the by the author so this guy and then let's say mid dot so let me say ampersand mid dot and this is going to add a small dot in the middle and then this is going to say the date so let me just say 0 to october 2022 and then let me see do we have anything else we don't need anything else we have the image we have the buy thing what we need to do is we need to grab this we need to grab this and place it inside a div of its own so that we can style out this div without affecting the image so let me save this and then let's see what we have on the screen we should have this image here once again and then remember that these are going to be grids so to begin with this section is going to be a is going to have a grid of one item so grid with grid columns dash one with a gap of let me see gap of eight 
and then for medium screens the grid columns are going to be two and then for large screens then the grid columns are going to be three so that now this is going to reduce massively into one grid and then we're also going to give this a max width of about 7xl with an mx of auto so that it doesn't push all the way to the end and you know what i'm also going to give it a padding on the x of five because i've just remembered that on small screens okay on small screens then it's going to go all the way to the end as you can see the way this one has done so we also need to add a padding on the x of five for this one so on top of this section let's go here and let's just say padding on the x of five which is going to push this inwards just a bit there we go okay and then we're going to have this fantastic and then now what we need to do is push add a margin here to push this downwards so let's go let's go inside this section let's say margin bottom of 20 to push away from this there we go and then now let's go ahead and style up this thing and so we're going to style it out in the following way we're going to give this paragraph a class name of text the small let me see reduce it massively and then this is going to apply for this other paragraph as well and then give this h2 a class name of text dash large and margin bottom of four pushed away from this just a bit i know what let's say margin on the y-axis of four pushed away from okay this is too much let's say two hmm let me say margin top of one and margin bottom of two let's see does that even matter margin top let's remove margin top let's just have it as that and then inside this div we're going to give this div a class name of padding y let's say you know what let me add a padding all around a uniform padding all around so look padding all around of four push everything in was just a bit as you can see and then i want to increase the line height for this i don't like this line height so here i'm going to say leading dash loose that should increase it that's too much let's say leading relaxed how is that that should be okay and then you know what let me change this to text xl to make it just a bit bigger just a bit bigger and then now what we need to do is we're going to go inside this article and give this article a border here and then we're going to say give this a class name of border and let's say border Wait, I add the background color. I changed this background color to be pink. I didn't have it as pink the, in the in the in the showcase that I showed you. So that means that we're going to change up these colors just a bit. So let's say border pink of about 800. How does that look? Okay, that looks ugly. <laughs> Let me just use the colors that I use. So border slate 800. Here, yeah. hmm. 600. Okay, let's say 400 there okay then let me see how pink looks here okay no 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 no, no. so border slate 400 and then let's give this a rounded border so rounded dash large and then let's set the overflow to hidden overflow hidden so that this is also rounded there we go and then i want that when i hover over this then the bg is going to change to about let's say slate dash 200 let me see how it looks mm. it doesn't really rhyme because like the background color is pink so it doesn't really rhyme with this see that so you know what let me change this back to slate here let me change this to slate let me see how it looks yeah let's just have it as that and then where were we we were in our blog no we were in our home page yes and then let's add a transition here so transition dash all with a duration of 200 so that it doesn't just pop in so like it has a very slight transition and you can see that this is going to be our cards so you can even paste this downwards uh one more time just to see how it's going to look so this article copy it and paste it downwards and this is how it's going to look here so the mid dot is this little thing that you see here just around here that little thing is going to be the mid dot okay so now what we need to do now is let me add the button here before i forget it and let's also remove this article because we only did one of the of it so this button here copy this button and then i'm going to go let me go outside of this section probably 
and then now this is going to say read all blog posts and then save this and it should be somewhere should be here here it is and now let me place this inside the div and then inside this div let me give this div a class of max with the 7 xl let me see it's going to come now come here or not let's say mx auto we should now bring it here there we go and then let's say padding on the x of five and you know what let me now remove this margin that i had here because i don't want this button to be offset so much so on this section i added a margin bottom of 20 here so let me reduce this to about 10 and then now on the button on this div i'm going to say margin bottom of 20 to push it away from this newsletter section and then i want this button to come here so let me see let's say give this a class of flex and items dash end and justify end we should now bring it here there we go fantastic so now let's actually deal with sanity and we can begin to fetch our data and so what we're going to do now is this we're going to create a new file inside the source folder we're going to create you know what let me create a new folder here and call it lib and then inside this folder i'm going to create a new file called client.js and then inside client.js we're going to do a few things using sanity client remember we installed a package called at sanity for slash client this one right here and so inside our client.js file we're going to do the following we're going to say import sanity client from it's from at sanity for slash client and then we're going to say export export const client is equal to sanity client and then we're going to do this and we're going to say we want the project id and i'm going to show you where we're going to get this we want the data set and the data set remember we set it to production and then we also want the api version and i'm going to show you where we're going to get this as well and then we're going to get the use cdn and we're going to set this to true and so use cdn what use cdn does is that it just caches requests so that subsequent ones are going to be faster and then the api version we're just going to set it to let me set it to a date which is one month before now so let me say 2022 and then let's say what is it today what is the date we are on 10 and it is so i should set it to 9 and it is on the 14th and then project id here you can go inside your source sorry inside your studio so inside the sanity that you created and then inside sanity json you're going to get your project id here so just copy this and then paste it inside here and that is your project id and then i'm going to save this and that is all we're going to do with this file so close it out and you can close out this file as well and then can close this and then now what we need to do is this we're going to begin to fetch data from the sanity client and then display it on our home page so close this and then now on top we're going to need to import a few things we're going to need to import use state and use e effect and then let me see we also need to import the client so import client from where is it it's dot slash lib sorry dot dot slash lib forward slash client and then let me see we also installed the date fns did we let me just confirm date and fns this is going to help us to format our dates so let's go ahead and import date fns so i'm going to say import format from date dash fns let me see and then let's set, set up our state values so i'm going to say const stories i'm just going to call this stories and set stories this is going to be called to use state and by default it's just going to be an empty array and then we're going to set up our use effect and the use effect is going to be uh, just a bit different so this use effect is going to be just a bit different because we're going to be using a query language called grok and it stands for graph relational object queries if i'm not wrong and so here what we're going to do is we're going to say client dot fetch so client here is coming from our sanity client so client dot fetch and then we're going to say this so we're going to say that we want to fetch the following client dot fetch and then place in your backticks and then we're going to say star 
and then our brackets underscore type and we're looking for a type of post and then we're going to say this place in your curly brackets and we're going to say we want the title we want the slug we want the body and all of this is coming from sanity you're going to see it in the sanity backend and then we want the uh what else we want the published at because we want the date when it was published we want the main image the main image is going to be this one as well as these ones by the way so the main image and then inside the main image you want the structure and we want to get the asset and then we want to say this so asset and then underscore id and then we want the url as well and then by the way you can just go ahead and copy this from the repository because like uh, you you shouldn't mess up anything inside here otherwise you're going to have issues and then below this we're going to go ahead and say this we want to get the alt attribute of the image and then we're going to go below this once again and we're going to say that you want to get the name of the author so whoever wrote it and then we're going to assign this into author author and say we want to get the name and then here we're going to place in our our straight line and then we're going to say order this by the published at so published at in descending order so order this by the date that it was published at in descending order meaning the first one is going to be always the first one so meaning the last one to be published is going to be the first one that shows up here okay and then once we have that then we're going to say dot then and we're going to say that the data that we get back we want to say set stories into the data meaning set a, a set meaning populate our state value here called called stories using the function of set stories so set stories into data and then we're going to say dot catch so in case there's an error then we're going to say console sorry we're going to say what console dot error is that correct Hmm. this should be correct and then of course make sure to add your empty dependency array for the use effect so that this request only runs once on the initial render so you know what just to make sure that we're getting something and of course we're not going to be getting anything because our sanity studio isn't populated and you know what let me just save this first of all because this is confusing dot catch so set stories into data let me cut this out from here and then let me place in another line here and say console.log the data because we're going to be adding data into our sanity studio i just want to see whether this is going to work so let's save this and then let's go ahead and let me open up f12 and we should see nothing but an empty array if i am correct let's go into the console and it says access to data da, 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 da. oh okay now this is an issue it says access to this has been blocked because of cross origin resource sharing here so what we need to do is we need to go into our sanity uh we need to log into sanity so let me say manage.sanity.io so go into this url or sanity.io forward slash manage and then you're going to get the studio that you created which is the sanity blog for me I mean yours is going to be different if you named it differently so just click on this and then what you need to do is we need to go into api and then inside cause origins here we need to add in localhost 3000 because we are currently working on localhost 3000 so change this into http and this one right here so http localhost 3000 so that react can actually get access to this and we can we can actually develop our blog so save this and then let's go ahead and reload this and now you can see that the error is gone and it says log file currently in use data but we get an empty array here okay so we get an empty array which is our initial state value so what we need to do now is we are going to go into our sanity studio which is localhost 3333 remember we opened it up and then i'm going to create a new author here so create a new author and we're just going to create a new one here and then we're going to say this i'm just going to add in my name loading document so placing like you can have the name of the author or whoever is, is writing it you can't write my own name there we go and then for the slug i'm just going to say generate and then for the image we're going to upload an image so upload so i'm going to upload an image here 
and i'm going to use this image i've just re-downloaded it from pixels so you need to get this and then let's just say open this up and then as it uploads let me add the bio here so there, there's our image you can edit it if you want but i'm just going to leave it as this and then for the bio i'm just going to click on this and say front and web developer and then publish and then we're going to go into the post here and then we're going to create a new post and i'm just going to create one new post to show you how you can do it and then i'm going to skip ahead where i've created a bunch of new posts so that you can actually have a bit of data to work with i disconnected for a moment so for the title here i'm going to say let me give this a title of uh, let me say what so, let me say create a blog using react.js and sanity and then for the slug i'm just going to say generate and then for the author i'm going to just click the drop down here and if you have multiple authors why does this say untitled why do you say untitled i did not give you a name what it didn't save oh my god so let's recreate this so generate upload the image this one okay and then publish okay there we go so back inside post it saves your progress by the way that's the good thing so just click the drop down here and then select the author if you have multiple authors then the drop down list is going to just show the multiple authors and then for the main image i'm just going to create a new main image here and you know what let me just select this one because it's obviously just on the home page and then for the categories we we did not create any category so i'm just going to leave it blank for the published art i'm going to leave it to this time and then for the body what i'm going to do is this i'm going to go into random generator.com and then just copy this text so copy it from here all the way to here and then just paste it inside here paste it in okay that should be okay and then let's publish and then once we publish it then uh they disconnect again so once you publish it then you should go into your react application and then just reload this and we should see something on the console if everything worked correctly and you can see that now we first of all get an empty array because it has not loaded yet but then once it loads in then you can see that we get an array of one item with an index of zero and you can see that you get the body which is coming from here we get the main image which is here we get the everything the slug the title and everything else right so this means that even the slug is here by the way, even the slug is here and by the way this slug I, I don't know whether i mentioned it but that is the slug that we're going to be accessing here so that you can show the correct blog post and so now what we need to do is because you can see that this is working correctly now what we need to do is we need to get the correct data to display here where we had coded everything and so now what we're going to do is this the logic for this is that this section is only going to show the first article meaning the last one that was published here so what you need to do is because we're getting an array here what you need to do is let me just cut this out so cut out this where is it where does it start here so we're going to cut out this section okay cut it out don't don't like erase it so cut it out and then we're going to say this we are going to say stories because stories is our state value here stories is our state value so stories zero so stories of zero we're going to be checking whether this is true meaning get the first story only the first one because if i have this to be stories only then we're going to be getting everything inside our our, our blog right so only when this is true then we're going to be rendering out this section but because we want this section to be clickable what we're going to do is cut out this section once again cut it out and then we're going to be rendering the link component from react Rotterdam. and this is going to be linking to something interesting let me just close it out first of all and paste this in this is going to be linking to and we're going to place in our curly brackets and then backticks and then we're going to say linked into forward slash blog meaning 
link into the blog let me show you link into the forward slash blog first of all and then we want to get the slug and we get the slug by doing this going into forward slash and saying dollar sign and placing in another curly brackets and then we're going to say slug let me say what uh is this correct this is not correct it should say go into stories of zero stories zero dot slug dot current meaning go into the current slug of the first story that is shown okay let me save this let me save this to test something out let me see whether this is going to work so link is not defined so just control and space bar here and then just click on this to import it and then that should fix it and then now this should change into a link see how it it popped out for a moment and then load it back in that means that it is actually getting the correct data now remember how we set up react router dom here and it goes into the blog post that only displays blog post here then what should happen is when i click on this then we should see blog post only so click on this and you can see that it's it's it shows blog post and then now look at the url here it goes into forward slash blog and then forward slash the slug of the current blog post that we are on see that so this is working correctly and then you can go back as well and then see how it pops back in like it's loading it's loading the data first and then showing it to you that is what is happening here okay so now what you need to do is just display the correct title and the text and then the read more button is already correct as it is so let's get the text here the title and then how we're going to do that is this we're just going to go inside this part here inside the h1 and then we're going to say stories 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 of zero dot title and then here we're going to grab this out and then this is going to be a bit complicated because what we want to render is let me show you here zoom in okay that's too much zoom out just a bit what we want to get here is we want to get the where is it the body so we want to get the body and then we want to go inside the body and get the children and then go inside the children and get the text here so the text here is the actual text of the blog post that we're going to have so let me just check something because this looks incomplete let me check something here where is it okay it's correct it's correct okay and so how we're going to do that is this we're going to cut this out and then we're going to say this so we're going to say get the stories of zero dot body of zero so get the first like the, the first paragraph or the first title that is showing and then get the children once again of zero okay <laughs> and get the text so that's how we're getting the text here so basically just like going down the hierarchy so get the body zero children zero and then get the text that is basically what is happening here so when i save this the thing with this is that it's going to show everything it's going to show the entire text look at this once it reloads in and it might break by the way i hope it doesn't I mean, let me see it does break so cannot read properties undefined of zero so what is happening is that this is loading in before the stories can load in so let's go ahead and add a check and so what we're going to do is we're going to grab this we're going to cut this out up to here we're going to cut it out and then we're going to say only when stories is true or let me say when stories is true then let's go ahead and sorry what when there are no stories when there are no stories then let's go ahead and render an h2 that says loading dot 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 and then when stories loads in that's when you want to render this other text this other part and this is still wrong because this needs to be rendered inside a fragment a fragment so that we can only return one item so that you can paste this in there we go and then this should fix it it should fix it so let's see and it almost fixes it but it doesn't so it gives me the error and then this once again so let me reload this let me just make sure okay so da, da, da. so we're getting an error and the error is because of this so let me disable this let me see something so we're going to get it now 
okay so there's something that i'm getting wrong somewhere in this logic so let me just story zero let me see so story zero dot body zero dot children zero or oh, children children oh my god spelling mistakes children and then now it's going to render see how now it shows the entire text because the text is the text is all of this so all of this we don't want to render all of that so what i'm going to do is we're going to use a method here called substring and what substring is going to do is we're only going to select a bit of text for it so to the end of this if i say dot substring sub string and then pass in two values so get the substring from the first one up to let me say the 200th character if i save this then we're only going to see 200 characters you can see that is looking quite nice okay and so now what we need to do is because i don't want this to just cut out like this like i want to show like three dots to show that this is actually a continuation of something so i'm going to cut this out so just cut it out and then press in back ticks and then press in your dollar sign once again under curly brackets and then paste this in and then to the end of this just say dot 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 so that now it's going to end with the text and say dot 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 so that meaning it's going to be readable uh, not li really readable but like it's a continuation of something and then you know what let me change this title to capitalized text so here let me say capitalize and we're going to have this that's looking much much better much better and then of course you can link this button to to the actual slug but you don't really need to because like the button is going to be dependent on this image oh we haven't changed the image we need to change the image as well huh. so let's go ahead and do this so here we're going to cut this out and then we're going to be checking for whether main image exists and then when main image exists that's when we want to render our image and then you know what it's not actually main image it should be stories stories of zero dot main image so if the story has a main image then show this main image so if this evaluates to true then the image is going to show and of course we're going to change the source for this and the source for this is going to be the following we're going to cut this out we're going to pass in stories of zero dot main image dot asset dot url and then the alt attribute here we're just going to render let me say stories should be stories zero dot alt attribute dot alt let me see stories zero dot main image dot alt wait yes dot main image dot alt dot main image dot alt attribute and then save this and then let's see what how the screen this should now change change now there we go and you can see oh my god that is a bad image to to have the text to be uh the white background background color but you can see that it now shows the correct image right and so now what we need to do is this i feel like changing up this image this image looks so bad <laughs> you know what let me change this image let me change this image let's say let's say upload and so i've downloaded a new image and i've set it to this lightning image so publish it and then once it publishes then i can reload this and it should now reload the image there we go this is looking like i said that this is just a bit more readable okay and then now let's see what we need to do let's let me just remember to change this up because like i don't want to have this to be be just hanging like this so let me change this into a link this is going to be linking to and you know what the link is going to be linking to the same thing as this so i'm just copy this part and then place it inside here and i do i do apologize if you can hear some noise from outside say this and then it should now there we go so now this is also a link although the this entire image is also a link now what you need to do is we need to also render the blog post on this part inside here now we're going to do that for this section and this section ends right here so let me go ahead and you know what let me change this up let me change this into a link before i forget paste this in and then now what this is going to link this is going to link to the blog so you don't need to have curly brackets here you can't have them but you don't need to have them though so this is linking to forward slash blog and once i save this and try to click on it 
then we should see all blog posts or or we should see blog really so let me go ahead and now let's go ahead and work on this and so for all our blogs then what we're going to do is we're going to cut out this part let me cut out this part and then what we're going to do is we're going to map over our stories state value because stories is an array so if you have multiple blog posts then it's going to we're just going to map over them and then display all of them so we're going to say stories stories dot map and then for every story that we get back then we are going to have this we're going to be rendering out our article which we just cut out but then we're going to have a key here and set the key into story dot slug dot current that should be correct story dot slug dot current and then you know what i want this to be links actually so cut up this article and place them inside links so this is going to be linking to and placing a curly brackets with some backticks and say forward slash blog forward slash dollar sign curly brackets story dot slug dot current there we go and close it out and then paste this in so each of these articles is going to be a link and then now we can remove this from here cut it out and paste it inside here because now the link is the, the one that we're returning and it's the one that needs to have a unique key and then now when i save this then nothing really is going to change because we are still hard coding everything inside here so what we need to do now is just change up this data to be dynamic and so what we're going to do here is we're going to change this up to say story dot name and then we're going to change this into a formatted date but just leave it in for now change this oops change this into story dot title and then change this into we're going to do something similar than like we did here so let me just copy this part copy and then we're going to change paste it where we're going to paste it in here here so text small and really relax those are the classes so here we're going to change this into text that's small and leading that's relaxed for our classes and then here now we are not getting story zero but we're getting story and then we need to get the image here so what we're going to do is perform a check once again where we're going to say when the story story dot main image is true that's when we want to render this and then the source for this we're going to cut this out and then the source is going to be the story dot main image dot asset dot url and then the alt attribute in case the image fails to load then we want to render story dot main image dot alt and then let's see that should be correct and then let me see because these are going to be many blog posts so let's also add lazy loading to this so loading equals to lazy let me see what else do we need to do we need to now format this date so this date remember we imported date fns here we imported the format from date fns so what we're going to do is we're going to say here we're going to say format and then format new date and then pass in our what is it story dot story i can't write story story dot published at which is the date that it was published at and then we want to format it in the in the form of what was it um want to format it in the form of day month and year so notice how these are this is small then capital then small that actually matters and this should be correct so let me save this let me see whether anything breaks there we go so nothing breaks oh i did not set a date see how i didn't set a date so if you don't set a date then the date is automatically automatically going to be uh, january 1st 1970 so we're going to change that up but let me just increase probably increase the the margin on top of this here let me say let me say margin y of two yeah let me have it as that and then let me change up this date so published at we're just going to change this into today's date so set to current time there we go publish so it was published and then now this should reset let me reload and it should now show the correct date so 14 october 2022 that's looking nice and then now when i click on this then it should go into the correct 
the correct URL and then the correct component should show up. So that's looking okay. Now, let me add more blog posts. So I showed you how to add one blog post, but for I'm going to add a few more so that we can have a bit more data to work with. And then I'm going to show you something else because remember how we're only rendering three items in the showcase. So I'm going to show you how we're going to do that if you have many, many blog posts. So let me skip to where I have the blog posts. Okay, so I've added a bunch of new blog posts. As you can see, there are quite a few. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into my React application and then just reload it. And we should see a bunch more blog posts right here. Looking, looking nice. Okay, they, they are loading in a bit slow because it's the first time loading in. But on subsequent loads, then it's going to load in a bit faster. Now, look at this. See how the images are not exactly the same size? They're not exactly the same size, right? So I want to fix that on medium screens and above because on medium screens, that's when it begin to display as two grids. So that's when this is going to be visible. So what I'm going to do here is on this image, I'm going to add a class name and I'm going to say that for medium screens, then I, have, I want the height to be 72, which is going to give all of them a fixed height, no matter the image. 70 is a bit big. Let me say 64. How does it look? 64. And then now introducing a fixed height. Now look at this. We also get another issue so we can fix that by giving this a width of full on all screens so that the image goes all the way to the end and then just so that it doesn't stretch out we can also say object dash cover and the effect here is almost barely visible because the image are the images are of a good resolution my computer just hung wow amazing amazing Okay, it's back. It's back. It's back. <laughs> I need to get a better setup. Ah, come on. It, it just... Oh, my God. Okay, no, let me let me check something. Okay, let me check my OBS. Okay, still recording. Okay. What is happening? What? Okay, this is this is now becoming annoying. This is no longer funny. It's now annoying. Okay, so there we go. Now look at this. Our our main image here now changes to the to the last the last blog post that we wrote, and then I give them dates that are in the future even just to show you that it doesn't matter the date that you give them, but the last one, uh, sorry, not the last one, but the one with the most recent date is always going to be the first one because of this line of code that we have here that says order them by the date that they were published in descending order meaning the last one to be published is always going to be the first one okay so that's looking quite nice now what i want to do is before i limit this blog post on the home page to be three i just want to copy this code here i want to copy where is it this section copy this section up to here and then inside my blog post sorry inside my blog.js then i'm going to return a fragment here and then i'm going to paste this in and then i'm going to go back into my home page and then i'm going to copy this use effect i'm going to copy this use effect and then paste it inside here as well so paste it below this and then back inside my home page i'm going to copy this use state so copy the use state and paste it inside here and the reason why i'm doing this is because the code on the blog page is exactly similar to this so there's no need to do it twice and then we're going to copy the format the client and this one as well copy this and paste it oops what 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 okay there we go paste it below this and then just copy the use effect here the imports of the use state and use effect and then just paste them inside here and then that should do it and we can remove this console log by the way so remove the console log here and save this and then inside our home page we're also going to remove the console log from here so remove this and save it and then now nothing is going to change on the home page but if i go into the blog page which is read all blog posts here if i go into this then we should see all our blog posts would you look at that so instead of having to do this page again, and it's basically the same thing, then we're just doing it once and then just rendering it in. But what I want to do is I want to have a title on top that says all blog posts. And then on the bottom, I want to have a button that goes back. 
so let me add that in inside the blog.js so let me go let me go where let me go above this let me add a div with an each one that says all blog posts and you know what let me just copy the styles of the h1 from the home page here so the h1 where's the h1 this one copy this part and paste it inside here but then change this text into slate 900 and what i give all headings a class of slate 900 so i don't need to add it in so all blog posts here not let me make this 6xl it's a bit small and then let me go inside this div give this div a class name of max with 7xl and padding on the x of 5 and mx of auto push it in was a bit so that it's now going to be here fantastic and then here on this div i'm going to give this a margin top of 20 and then a margin bottom of 10 to push it away from this text from from the top as well as from here okay and then let me see we need to have a button on the bottom and you know what let me just copy this button instead of doing it again so copy this and then paste it inside the blog so below this section here paste this in this is going to go back into forward slash and then i'm just going to say back to home page save it and we should have a button here where is it here so back to home page i mean it's barely visible but you want it to be like that because you want people to read this i mean they are going to see it obviously but <laughs> so that's working correctly so back to home page is working and then now on the home page what i want to do is i want to limit the blog posts that are shown here to three and that is very simple to do because i don't want all these blog posts to be visible on the home page so you do that simply by going into the home page and then setting the data so the data that you get back here I'm just going to set it into data.slice and get the first three items. So zero at zero to three and then save this. And then once it reloads, then we're only going to get three items. So you can see only one, two, three, and then we get the rest of our landing page. And then we can go to read all blog posts and then we can get everything else looking amazing. And then now what you need to do is now deal with the single blog post page. So when you click on this, we should go into the single blog post. So let's go ahead and deal with that next. And so inside the blog post, the first thing that I want to do is I want to change this document title. So let's go inside blog post JS. Let's get the use state. Oops. Get, let's get use state and use effect from React. And then let's set up our second use effect. So this is going to be our second use effect because the first one is going to be the one that fetches our data. I mean, we can also make this to be the first one. I don't think it matters all that much. But this is going to have a dependency array here, which is going to be dependent on the slug. And I'm going to show you how we're going to get this. But what I want to do in this use effect is I want to say document.title and set this into a dynamic body where I'm going to say we are reading uh, a document here called dollar uh, curly brackets slug. So not slug, but it should be um, what? Because slug is going to render this. I don't want this to render. I want to render the document title. So it should be, we're going to have a state value called blog post. So blog post dot title. And then let's set up our state values here. So let's say const blog post and set blog post. This is going to be called to use state. By default, it's going to be an empty array. And then let's do this. We need to set up our our thing. What's it called? Oops, what is this? I didn't even see that. Okay. We need to set up our use effect. So use effect to fetch our data. And the use effect for this is almost going to be similar to what we have in the in the home page. So you know what? Let me just copy this part. So copy this use effect. And then inside the blog post, let's paste it here. So paste it in. But then we also need to get the slug. We need to get the slug from the address bar here. And we can do that using a React hook called, so not a React hook, but a hook in React Rota DOM called use params. So we're going to destructor the slug and set this into use params. And then let's import this. So let's go ahead and say import link. We need to import link because we need to link part of the homepage and then import use params as well. This is coming from React Rota DOM. 
and then let's do this so this is the type of post so so we are no longer looking for the type of post but we're looking for a type of dollar sign curly bracket slug because we want to we want the document to match the slug that we have inside here okay and then let me see whether anything here changes we no longer need this because i mean the blog post is no longer going to be ordered by by the the date was published because you're going to be clicking on one and then here we need to change this into set blog post so set blog post and then this is now no longer going to be data dot slice but we're going to set it into oops into data zero sorry da data come on into data of zero meaning get the first item that matches and then here we can catch the console error okay that's okay and then the the dependency array here is going to be dependent on the slug which means that every time that the slug changes then rerun the use effect and we know that the slug is only going to change when we link when we click on another blog post so that is correct and then let's see what we need to do so the document title here is going to be blog post dot title that is correct and then just to test it out just to test it out let me save this and we should see the document title change here if it does so client is not defined i forgot to import it so let's go ahead and import client from dot, dot slash lib forward slash client there we go and now the document title should change so it says reading undefined okay that is a problem let's go to let me just make sure that it has reloaded so click on this one once again so reading it should show huh doesn't show anything let me check the console client is not defined we have fixed this we have fixed this but this is still not working so we want it to be dependent on oh you know what this is wrong oh wait it's correct it is correct it should be dependent on the slug because we want it to be or it should be dependent on the blog post dot title hmm let's see so now we get an error we get an error how is this how is this the thing that is giving me an error seriously let's check our terminal oops what did i do what did i do terminal let's check that we don't have anything so link is defined so this one we're going to fix this but how is this the thing that is giving me an error document dot title document hmm. cannot read properties undefined okay so it is having a, pro a problem reading the property here so let me comment this out first of all so that we don't spend too much time on this anyway so we have the blog post here let's go ahead and build out our structure first of all let's close this out and then let's return a fragment here and then we're going to be returning a section and you know what let's check for whether blog post exists so whether blog post exists that's when we want to render out the fragment and now let's just run out a section here section and then what we're going to do is this we want the image to show up first so let's add in a check and say that when blog post dot main image just like we did in the home page exists that's when we want to render our image the source for this image is going to be uh, what was it it's going to be the blog post dot main image dot asset dot url and then the alt attribute in case the image fails to load is going to be blog post dot main image dot alt and then close this out and then this is going to be the big image and then let's say the h1 for this is going to be oops should it be inside here should be outside of this so the h1 the document is going to be the blog post dot title okay and then now we need to render out the text but before we render out the text let me just copy this button once again 
let me copy where is it where are you this one let me copy this and paste it inside here so let me paste it below this and this is going to say read more blog posts blog posts and then this is now going to link into forward slash blog so this is correct so go back into the the main blog page and then below this we want to render out the body but before we render out the body let me render out a paragraph here that says by let me say blog post dot name should be correct and then add in a mid dot so ampersand mid dot and then here we're going to say blog post dot uh, sorry we need to format it we need to say format the date so format new date new date format the blog post blog post dot published at and then format it in the form of day month and year year four times okay and then we need to import this from data fns so let's import it so we're going to say import format from date dash fns and then we also need to import portable text because we need to render out our text so i'm going to say import portable and you know what it's a named import so import portable text from portable text react remember we installed this package and then below below let me see below this we're going to render out portable text portable text and then inside here we're going to pass in a prop and the prop is going to be the value and this is going to see blog post dot body and then let's say let me say below this div below this div we're going to render out our profile card so just render the profile component that we created this should be correct this should be correct so let's save this save it and then let's see whatever the screen we have so it says import format format has already been declared where did they declare it format oh it imported on the top so remove this import i didn't see that okay so save this let's see and we should have nothing shows on the screen let's open up our console it says cannot read properties and defined reading title so blog post blog post dot main image hmm. cannot read properties undefined of title what did i do something wrong did i do something wrong ah uh, you know what here this is no longer underscore type this is going to be uh slug dot current this should be correct save this oh so that means that was the problem with this as well right yeah yeah that was the problem with this so if i enable this then it should now show here invalid time value invalid time value new that blog post that published at dame how did i do it here how did i do it here published at let me just copy this part copy and paste it inside here change this into blog post blog post save it how is that an invalid time value reload this really 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 disable this once again invalid time value day month year huh. <laughs> invalid time value oh is it because it's a date in the future because this blog post is a date in the future wait but why does it show up now these things now let me style it out before it brings an error once again i think it's because like the date is in the future that's why it says in invalid time value so here let's give this a class name of padding y20 padding x of 5 let's give it a max width of reduce this to about 3xl because i don't want the blog post to go all the way to the end and then let's say mx auto and then inside this image let's give this image a class name of about height dash two thirds and then let's say width dash full and object dash cover and then rounded dash large with a very slight box shadow 
and then give this h1 let me see so the h1 is this one class name of text dash 4xl margin bottom of 4 and then for large screens let's say oh, let me say for excel screens then text dash text dash 6xl and then here let's give this a class name of font dash bold font bold and text dash small and then let's say margin bottom of eight and then portable text here so we can't style this out as it is so let's place it inside a div oops inside a div and then let's say let me say you know what this is even okay as it is i don't really even need to place this inside a div actually and then let me see we need to go let me go above here let me add a margin top here of 10 so that it pushes away just a bit from this text i don't want it to be so close to the text and then save it and then let's see what you have so it's going to be limited there we go there we go there we go and then let's add a margin on the y of the h1 so here let's say margin bottom of four so let's say this let's say margin top or let's say margin y of eight let's just have it as that that's looking okay that is looking okay increase the the rounded here let's say rounded dash 2 xl increase it okay that's looking okay how does it look on mobile even on mobile looks quite quite nice and we have our profile oh i did not style this out for the mobile how did i forget that how did i forget that let's style it out the profile because it's something that is easily forgotten so the profile here let me go on this issue let's say padding all around of eight and then for empty screens i'm going to say padding of zero so this is going to set reset the padding to zero but it's still going to add a padding right of eight so that should fix it there we go uh hmm, i don't want this here what is this margin what is this margin the gap of eight the gap of eight is here so let me say this should only apply for medium screens there we go that's looking much better much more uniform there we go okay and then let's see so this is the single blog post page see how it looks looking quite nice right read more blog posts goes to the blog page and then if i click on this oh my god what's wrong if i click on this i think it's going to give me an error by there because this is also a date in the future but let me try it out so click on this yeah it's a date in the future so let me reset let's reset this reload and then let me go to a date that is not in the future so october 5th click on this one and still nothing happens why does nothing happen huh let's check our console is it still saying invalid time value at format what close this blog post why are you saying that let's enable this let's enable it so it says invalid time value hmm. import format from data fns let me try something let me try to add a check here where i'm going to say that check for whether blog posts blog posts dot published at exists and when this exists that's when i want to render the mid dot oops add in a fragment that's when i want to render the mid dot as well as this format let me see whether that is going to work let me see does that work that works that works what let me try this one and it also works what i mean even i don't know even i don't understand why why it is oh i get it i get it it's because this was evaluating so blog post was the publish that was evaluating be, before everything else could load that's why that's why that's why okay 
okay so that means this is not working correctly and you can see we have all our blog posts and then now let's deal with our error page we need to add in our error page so far slash oops a link that doesn't exist and we should have our error page here and then our error page is going to be as follows so into error.js let's import link from react router dom and then let's return a fragment here with a section and then this section is going to have an article with an h let me say an h1 that says oops let's say oops you found a page that doesn't exist and then let's have a paragraph that says you seem to have discovered a page on our website that either doesn't exist or may have moved and then below this let's have a link the link component linking back to the home page that says back to home page and then let's say hmm this should be fine let's give this a class name of flex and item center and justify center and h screen so that everything is moved to the center with a class of text center as well and then padding on the x of five and then padding on the y of 10 doesn't really matter actually not let's remove the padding on the y of 10 give this h1 a class name of uh, let's say text dash for xl well as screens text dash 5xl margin bottom of h to push away for the paragraph give this paragraph a class name of padding oh, sorry margin on the bottom of eight as well pushed away from this link and then we give this link a class name of underline just to make it uh, visibly clickable and also give it a class of text slate 600 and then let's give this article oops a class name of max with 3xl and mx auto so that this text doesn't go all the way to the end and you should see error here there we go there we go that's looking it's a very basic error page but i mean it does the work the, the job so back to home page and we see this okay fantastic and then i've just remembered something let me show you if i click on this blog post and i scroll all the way to the bottom and i click on read more blog posts then oops wait did they fix it did they fix it no i don't think they did i think it's because the data is loading in let me let me check some right there so what happens what i want to fix is this see how i am right on like just just below the blog post page here when i click on read all blog posts it takes me to the blog post page but when i scroll to the bottom and i click on back to home page then it takes me to the bottom instead of to the top so i want to fix that and we can fix that by doing this we're going to create a new component called scroll to top scroll to top.js and then inside here we're going to say we're going to say import use effect Oops. from react and then we also want to say import use location from react router dom oops react router dom and then here we're going to say export default function scroll to top and then what we're going to do is this we're going to say const path name so destructure the path name this is going to be equal to use location and then what we're going to say is this we're going to say use effect and we're going to say that we want the window to scroll to the position of zero zero meaning to the top left when the path name changes so add in path name as a dependency so save this and then what we need to do is render this component on top here above everything else so render the scroll to top component and then just make sure it is imported here and then save it and then now we can try it out again if i go back if i go back okay go back go back home 
okay go back home there we go so that now if i click on read all blog posts and then i say back to home page then it should throw me back to the top you can see that now i'm back on the top that's much better and then before i forget let me also add a netlify.toml file so netlify.toml just to make sure that the redirects work correctly on netlify because we're going to be deploying this to netlify so add in the redirects and then we're redirecting from equals to forward slash everything to oops to forward slash index.html and then wait is it forward slash or to index.html with a status of 200 save this and then now what we need to do is we need to add the dark mode version of this website we need to add the dark mode version i think that is the only thing that re that is remaining really so let's go ahead and do that right away so what i'm going to do is i'm going to open up my settings and turn on dark mode so i'm going to turn on dark mode here so turn on dark mode and this should switch everything to dark mode for my system if this thing is going to work actually come on so annoying this is what it actually is like making tutorials by the way we just use the power of editing to make everything seem fast <laughs> there we go so dark mode is on and then now when i switch to this you can see that nothing really happens but you can see that the text changes remember remember how in the beginning i set here the dark mode text to white i set it to white right inside here so that's why because i've switched it to dark mode now the text changes to white and let me just confirm that in our tailwind config we have dark mode so we don't have dark mode here yet but what you can do is you can have dark mode and set this into media and what this means is that it's the dark mode version is going to show when the user preference is set to dark mode or the system preference for the user is set to dark mode and then now what you can do is this we just need to go ahead and change up these colors for example on the body so on the body here i'm going to say that for when dark mode is enabled then change the bg to slate 900 which is going to change this into a dark color would you look at that and just by adding that one line look at how everything now changes of course we need to change this hover effects and this can remain and then we need to change our profile card as well and so what we're going to do is this let's add with let's begin with our home page so inside pages inside our home page we need to go inside our blog posts here where is it we need to go inside this articles so inside the articles we're going to say this here we're going to say that on dark mode then we want the border to be slate 800 and then here we want to say that on dark mode when we hover over it then we want the bg to be slate 800 as well so let me see would you look at this now it changes you can see that now it changes so that we're going to have this that's looking nice and then we need to change this button for dark mode as well and so the button is going to be here where we're going to say here that on dark mode we want the bg to be slate 800 and then on on dark mode when we hover over it we want the bg to be slate slate dash 700 so let me see reload and of course change the color as well <laughs> so here on dark mode change the text color to be text slate 400 and there we go so this is our dark mode button this is our dark mode version and then change the profile for dark mode as well so components profile here we're going to say on dark mode we want the bg to be slate 800 so that it's just a bit lighter there we go and then change this on the ul's as well so here and here we're going to say on dark mode then change the text to slate 400 and i've added two castles by just clicking here and holding down the alt key and clicking here that's how you can add multiple castles so just make them a bit lighter there we go and then change this text on the footer as well i think did i change the text for the footer is the footer the ul's yeah here so on dark mode i want to change the text to slate 400 let's see fantastic fantastic this can remain as it is and then this can remain as well and then what we need to do now is just go into the single blog post page and you can see that this is already reset as well because because of the optimization that we did in the beginning right here where we just added these lines and then let me see we need to change this button 
so on the where is it on the blog post page we need to change this on dark mode we need to say bg slate 800 and then dark hover bg slate 700 and then here we need to say that on dark mode text slate 400 save it and this should reset there we go and that button as well and then for the blog page as well so for the blog page we're going to do the same for this button so here we're going to say that for dark mode we need the bg to be slate 800 and then dark mode and hover we need to say bg slate 700 and then here on the text on dark mode change the text to slate 400 and then on the articles here we need to say that for dark mode then the border should be slate 800 and then here we need to say that for the dark mode over then the bg should be slate 800 save it reload 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 there we go would you look at that this is looking quite quite nice fantastic and then back to home page what page is remaining we need the error page as well for the dark mode so let's go to a page that doesn't exist and we should have the dark mode here oh it reset oh that's looking okay we just need to change this color so on the error page on the error page here we need to change this and say that for the dark mode then the text should be slate 400 and there we go and i think that is that is it but i want to show you how you can deploy this to netlify and to sanity so that you can actually like keep on writing blog posts oh i remembered did we change the title here oh so now the title works see how the title works so the title changes into the name of the the title of the uh the blog post that you're reading and then let's see let's see let's see let's see I also want to change the document title when we're on the home page so on the home page here i'm going to add in another use effect right below this and i'm going to use effect and then i'm just going to say this is my arrow function and an empty dependency array and say document dot title and set this into my name's thomas sankara's blog let me say blog website and let me just say blog so now this is going to change as well into that and then just to be sure just to be sure let me also copy this and paste it inside my public folder and inside my index html and change the document title here change where is it here change it into this oops paste this in there we go and then change this color into 111827 which is a dark gray from tailwind and that should be it so save this and then now I'm going to commit this to GitHub and then we are going to deploy it to Sanity and to Netlify. So just close all of these files. Close all of these files. Why is my computer so slow? And then close them. Make sure that you don't have any error in the console. And then we're going to close this and then just shut this down as well. And then we're going to create a new repository and then deploy it to Sanity as well. And so what I'm going to do is this, you know what, let me do this first of all, let me split my terminal. So split the terminal. Oh my God, what is happening? So split my terminal here and then what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to cd into Sanity Blog YT, which is the name of my Sanity Studio right here. And then I'm going to say Sanity Deploy. And that's simply how you deploy it to Sanity. So just wait for it to run and then follow the instructions. And then let me go ahead and create a GitHub repository for this. So let me go into GitHub. So github.com, let me go to. So inside my GitHub, I just want to create a new repository. And then I'm going to create a new repository here that is called Sanity Blog YT. It's going to be public and then just say create repository. And then let's copy this link and then let's open this back up and then inside this terminal let me split them properly i'm going to say git init okay and then oh by the way this is running so let me let me do this first 
so it's asking for the host name now make sure you that you remember the name that you give this because this is going to be the the because this is going to be the url of your sanity studio when you deploy it so that you don't have to keep on going to local in order to change something so i'm just going to call this sanity blog yt blog yt dot sanity dot studio meaning if i go into sanity blog yt dot sanity dot studio then i'm going to have my sanity studio which you just saw that we were adding our blog posts so that's how you can do it in in order to update things like if you want to add a new blog post you can just go to that url so have this in and then as it runs you know what let me just add a new terminal here so that i can have this separately so git init is going to initialize a git repository here and then before i forget let me just make sure that i add node modules to our git ignore otherwise i'm going to commit 5000 items in fact even 10,000. so just remove this forward slash from here and then what you notice is this is going to be grayed out as well you can see it is now grayed out meaning it's not going to commit node modules and then just reload to make sure that you don't have anything you can see it, it was about to commit 10,000 items that is not something that you want to do to github right because when someone clones your repository they're still going to have to install node modules anyway so let me say git add all and git oops so git commit let me say sanity blog complete and then let me say oops what is taking so long let's say git remote add origin and paste in the link to our remote repository and then git push dash u origin main and then push it to github and then as it pushes to github then let's log into netlify so that we can actually like uh deploy this so netlify deploy this close this and don't yet close this by the way don't yet close this don't yet close this because we need to add in something else so let's log into netlify and then let me make sure that this has deployed or still deploying what okay so like log into netlify using github and then once this deploys then we can reload this and we should see our our thingy right here there we go there we go that's looking okay okay so we have our studio right here as well okay now let's see let's see let's add a new site from existing project from github and by the way netlify always also has a dark mode version so you can see that i switched the dark mode version i switched my system preference to dark mode and then now we're getting the dark mode version so we are searching for sanity blog dash yt and then let's deploy this let's deploy that deploying so let's say deploy site and then let's change the site name so change the site name here change it into tsb let's say sanity blog yt that should be fine so sanity blog yt and then as it as it deploys let me check for our deploy here so it's building so let it finish building out so once that runs you can see that now it deploys our studio into sanity blog .sanity studio so if i visit this link so go to this link and let's just paste it here then you're going to see of course it's going to ask me to log in because of obvious reasons oops what oh my internet disconnected really at this time really this is the time that it chooses to disconnect oh my goodness okay anyways so if you go into this link then it's going to show you your sanity studio where you can update everything but then what i wanted to show you is okay it's back so what i wanted to show you is once this reloads if it reloads there we go so we are going to have all our blog posts that we wrote and then if i try to visit our blog page this tool crash we can close this anyways 
into Netlify. Let me see whether this has finished deploying. Let's open this link. Now, when you open this link, look at this. We have everything in, inside here except our blog post. If I even go to this page, we have this text except our blog post. And if you open up F12, it's going to give you the same, the same error that we had saying access to this has been blocked because of cause policy. So what you need to do is we need to add in this link into our cause origins right inside here. So add cause origins and paste in our link and then save it. And then once we save it and then we can reload, where is it? We can reload this page and then it should now be able to fetch our blog posts. Would you look at that? Looking amazing. And just like that, now you've deployed your Sanity Studio and then you've also deployed your React application and then now you have access to both. So if you want to add in a new blog post, all you have to do is go to this link and then add in a new blog post and then add in whatever you want. Now, you can also do the same thing in your local host, but the thing about that is that when you make a change, then you have to redeploy the Sanity Studio. So that's the thing about that. Okay, so that is going to be the end of the video. And I got a lot of questions asking how we can get more data to display here. And I hope this video has helped you out. And if you enjoyed it, then please leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel as well if you're not already. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.